All right, guys. I'm back. I'm pissed because YouTube is doing something totally bogus. It just deleted the last two streams. It froze up on me. Uh, so I'm back. I got a dip in. Uh, we're going to try to talk swim baits. I've got a hell of a battery charge on the laptop. If we have to go for another extra hour or two, uh, we're going to try to get it done. Uh, the information I'm trying to give you guys is too good just to kind of give up on. Uh, but if the stream is going to keep lagging uh, so bad where the live chat won't go in, um, we'll try something else. So, anyway. I know guys are trying to watch, you know, on YouTube and Facebook and stuff like that. Let me know if it's lagging better, worse, whatever. We're going to try to get her done. Um, man, everybody's sitting at home. They ain't doing jack. They're watching Fox News and CNN and all this stuff and all that stuff. So let's get her done. Um, as long as the video looks good, I don't give a shit. So in case you missed the first part of this stream, do me a favor. Smash the like button if you like swim baits. If you like the bait man. I don't give a shit. Mash the like button uh, if you're not wearing pants right now. Um, so let's get this thing going back on YouTube. So let me uh, see if I can copy. I'll paste, post this on Facebook uh, afterwards. So That's right. So we have talked about these guys. This is a Rage Tales Rage Swimmer from Strike King. We have talked about the Kitex. This is a morning dawn color, so if you guys like dirty water or you want to give them a little sweet pink, check them out. And we have talked about our Six Sense Divine Swim Baits. I like this green color. This, these smallmouth should smash that. And we talked about the OG. This is the Zoom Swimmer. This is the best replacement for the OG Bass Tricks, my favorite hollow belly of all time. But, you know, Six Sense makes a good hollow belly too. I really like it. Um, I did, you know, I talked about True Bass Swim Baits uh, a few weekends ago, and I found some there at the Bassmaster Classic. And, you know what? I think they've changed something on the bait. It's a lot nicer than it used to be. So I think I'm going to grab some. But I love the Zoom Swimmer. Um, I got a rule of thumb on these hollow bellies. If you're fishing 8 foot of water or less, I put it on a kill weighted hook. Anytime I'm above 8 foot, I'm going to fish uh, it on a swim bait head. I vary myself up from a 3 8 all the way up to a 3 quarter. I want to show you guys something. A lot of guys always ask what head I use. I'm going to show you. I use these right here. This is a revenge style swim bait hook. This was the original revenge. And it's got a longer shanked hook. I found out I was losing a lot of fish on these because the hook was too big. Look how long that is compared to this handmade one down on the bottom. Yes, there will be dip tonight. I'm sorry. I'm about quit. I'm down to like half a can a day. But anyway, very simple how I rig these. This is the zoom. It's great for demonstration because I can rig it many different ways and it won't tear up. But all I do is push that guy in to where it get the curve of the hook. And I start kind of threading it. And I find out you can see by looking at the webcam. But they're pretty transparent. And I'll come out right here in the back. And then I just push it on up. The cool thing about the zoom is because the plastic stiff enough. You almost don't need super glue, but I will super glue it a little bit. And that is the perfect size. Now that's a three quarter ounce head. I can fish that on the bottom. I can fish it suspended any way I can go. Shadowlicious is awesome. Matter of fact, I forgot I had a pack up here. Oh, dang, I just found more swim baits. 
What's up, part-time fishing? I do not think a... Hmm, that's a good question. So I want to show you something about these as well. Um, here's the Shadowlicious. Very, if you'll notice, a very more rounded profile. The Shadowlicious has a bigger, fatter tail uh, than the Zoom. This one runs really, really good. I actually like these. Um, there's a way to rig them where you can actually stuff a swim bait head up into it. So if I got a head I can do that with. You can actually take a Shadowlicious, get you some scissors, make you a little slot in the back. And then you can, if you cut it all the way through, that is, if you don't, you're kind of screwed. This isn't going to hurt the bait. It cut me a little slot there. I think I'll take that head. And I'm going to, see that? I'm going to push that head all the way up. Works really good in the Shadowlicious. And then I can pop that out. The eye of the hook out. And then I'm, what you can do. Ah, yeah. You see the eye right there? Just press it down. It will come out. And then just take you some mend it and you can mend your shadowlicious back up. And that's how you rig a hollow belly. And you can stuff that hook inside and you get a really crazy action with it like that right there. What's up, Eric Philborn? Rising sun on a hog farmer head is sweet, but that's a little trick a lot of guys from Kentucky Lake use. They, they stuff these heads up inside, but you've got to use kind of a real specific head. It needs to be uh, rounded. And this is just a Strike King uh, squadron head. So after you've got that hook in there, you see I've still got a, a cut in my Shadowlicious. Take some mend it, and you can mend back around it, and it's as good as gold. So, But Strike King also makes an internal swim bait. Blade Runner makes one. They're great uh, for these hollow belly heads. The only problem is that sometimes they're not rigged perfectly in the center. You'll get a little offside roll. That's more of a ledge fishing deal. Springtime, again, I'm going to use uh, some kind of weighted swim bait hook, a 6 aught beast hook, a Gamakatsu, or the 6 cents. One thing I'll say, the Shadowlicious has probably some of the best movement on a belly weighted hook. I would put it right behind the bass tricks. It's really, really good. Now, my other tip, you see this package in this blue label? Thank you so much, Sycamore Outdoors. See this blue label on this Strike King package? This is an old pack of Shadowlicious. Why is that important? The new ones with a red label have a different coloration in the clear coat, and they aren't as soft. I know uh, somebody told me that one time, and I said, bullsh, you know, and long time. Epic Eric, what's up, man? Oh, Epic Eric been, knows the power of the hollow belly. That dude jacked him up down there in Alabama. Don't think I wasn't watching Eric, catching him on that true bass. Glad you're in here. Hope you're quarantining yourself with all kinds of baits. Eric, do you want to join the live stream? We can put you on the live stream. Um, so that's your basic hollow bellies. The Bass Tricks, the Zoom Swimmer, the Six Sense, the Berkeley Power Belly, True Bass. I, I can get Eric on this live stream. You won't, Eric, you want to come on here? Let me know on there. And we'll get you in. But man, I jacked him up on this thing. But ledge time is when I am going to... I still can't flip a jig. now, nah, but I figured out I can skip one. Let's see. Let me, let me see if I can get uh, Eric on here real quick. We, we broke the internet last time, so... We'll call him up on the old Scott. See what, see what he's doing. Y'all give me just a second. Uh, Eric does know all things all bait. 
He is a freaking good dude, too. What brand of smaller aught hooks for finesse swim bait would you recommend? That's a good question. Uh, I would say I like the owner lockdown head. Uh, Scottsboro Tackle makes a great one called a Hellfire head. It's got a screw lock on it. It's really, really good. We're trying to. I'm trying to get Epic Eric on here if my Skype will load up. It's giving me a little trouble right now, of course. I know this dude's got some swim bait, so here we go. I got Scott loaded up here. Uh, let me go hit my. I gotta do a special little setting on here. Comment ID, blah, 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 blah. Uh, video. There's a little thing I have to push in here to get him on. All right, let's see if let's see if he'll answer. We're gonna call Epic Eric. Oh, he's here. Oh, he's here. Can you hear me, Eric? Let me pull you into the stream. Hold on, man. I'm trying. Hold on, man. I'm trying. I'm going to have to go grab some, uh, some stuff, I believe. Now I've lost my YouTube chat. Now I've lost my YouTube chat. Oh no. Alright, I've got you pulled in on a Skype, but and it's not showing. Just give me a second. It may not work. It may not work. That's all right, man. You'll try it one more time. That's all right, man. I'll try it one more time. Dang it. I didn't mean to jam you up, brother. No, it's all good. I'll get back to what I was doing. Dang it. Uh, me and you, we'll, no, we'll get a... If, yeah, that's uh, cool, man. I wonder if it's because I didn't start it right out. I wonder if it's because I didn't start it right out. Might be. Might be. We'll get another one going, man. It's all good. I'll watch. I'll just comment, bro. I'll participate. All right, dude. Appreciate it. All right, guys, I tried to get Eric on here, but uh, the Internet's just not going to allow me to do it for some reason. Um, but Eric says he is going to participate here in the chat. So anyway, um, we're going to keep going.
I'm sorry about that. We tried to get Eric in here, but let's talk about some swim baits that aren't hollow. Great for the spring uh, as well. I've got so many freaking swim baits, I got a damn problem. So, hey, no problem, Eric. We'll get a. If you guys want a another epic Eric live stream, uh, maybe next Saturday night. Uh, let me know down here in the comments. Uh, I think he would be a really good dude to talk about doing a little bit more of finesse, soft plastic fishing. I know Eric loves. Uh, he knows a lot about that floating worm. You guys see. Uh, See MDJ ding them on that floating worm, that would be awesome. Uh, that's kind of a deal that I've known about for a long time. I've talked about it here, but let's talk about more on some swim baits. So, here's one that uh, I've had quite a bit of luck on. I do do giveaways, Eric. Sure do. Uh, I just mailed out the last giveaway today to guys, I've been way behind. Uh, I am going to do a big six cents jank juice giveaway. Uh, so somebody can win everything in jank juice but this guy right here this is the spark shed this is the bigger one a lot of guys throw that small one but i've had really good luck with this bigger mega bass spark shed it's got a great hand pour feel to it it's got some good body roll it's going to kind of roll like this right here and it's got a subtle tail kick it's not the biggest action tail but it's real subtle very natural i really like that spark shed uh i'll rig it uh, you can put it on a kill weighted hook or you can put it on a jig head. Uh, personally, it's a good Alabama rig bait. Uh, a lot of guys put them on wobble heads. Spark Shad is really good, especially with one of these. And I'll get a better color Spark Shad. This is the, actually the color I use the most. This is IU. For some reason, uh, the fish here on the Tennessee River love this green color. This is almost a Tennessee shad. Tail's a little warped on that guy. Let's probably get one with a straight tail here. I'm going to show you a great head for these things. Now, not every fish in your lake is going to be shallow, and it's still a good time to slow roll these swim baits deep over points and flats. This is, uh, this is the green fish tackle. This is the shin spin head. And Mega Bass makes a, I believe it's called a Ricci spin head. But man, these Mega Bass are sweet. And for this big, bigger size, I like this Greenfish Tackle. Uh, just simple rig. I'm going to come out the back end. Push it right up. That guy right there, that little blade on the nose of the Spark Shad, is awesome, man. When this thing is, is rocking, that little blade, blade's moving. And it's it's a cool deal. Now the difference, uh, if you'll notice on the Ricci blade, bladed head, it's a little bit. The blades are offset a little bit more. I don't know how much difference it makes. They say it's a lot, but dude, that is a killer bait right there. Definitely, you almost use this as a spy bait down there. Just slow roll, and just it just it's just rocking. Catches a lot of fish, man. What's up, Cole and Jay? It's a couple of my favorite YouTube people right there. Dude, Cole has is, uh, sent me a little private message. He may or may not be hammering them on that Six Sense Frog. Uh, I'll go ahead and update you guys. Uh, the, uh, the thing that we've got going has kind of delayed a lot of shipment stuff from Six Sense. The frogs, they're on their way. They're being held up. They're going to get here, so... When you have that spin head, is it meant to be weight just below the surface? No, you fish it down below. Bait man, what about True Bass Sexy Rexy color? Man, it, it looks good. Um, I love the bass tricks. Uh, Chris, I think you know, possibly that was an original special color in bass tricks for Watson's Marine in East Tennessee. And that's what Sexy Rexy. And I think so many guys wanted it. And then they started making it in the True Bass. So Travis is wigging out. Uh, Travis is a cool dude, man. I, I got to met tra meet Travis Manson. It was very brief and uh, super nice guy, man. Uh, Travis said he'd love to come on uh, Bateman Raw. I think he's a super cool dude, man. And uh, I've met him before selling him baits, actually, if you'll remember that. But I would love to have him on here. 
Big Papa X, Bass Magic is very similar to the Shadowlicious. Matter of fact, there are several companies using that style mold. Um, I have not used the River to Sea boot tail. It looks cool though. Yeah, Travis is on. Travis is. He is prepared for the apocalypse. No problem, James Queen. I love those quiver worms. So make sure you guys smash that like button. Hopefully, we get more people in here. Smash Tech Hollow Belly. I haven't used it a whole lot, so I can't give an honest opinion, but guys really like them. So, anyway, solid bait, Spark Shad. Now, staying on the solid baits. Look at this guy. You want to go big or you want to go home? This is a 9 inch swim bait. This is a giant. If you're looking for the biggest mofo in your lake, this is what you throw. Uh, this is made by a company here called Ignite Swim Baits. Uh, it's not an Osprey. It's basically the top shelf mode, but that's nine inches. Rib for her pleasure, not for yours. Um, I'm going to show you. I'll compare it to a seven inch. This is really more summer stuff, but there's a lot of guys that rig these up. So this is a seven in my left hand and this is a nine in my right hand made by the same company you could almost weigh this in in a tournament it is big enough the reason i'm showing you this though is there are guys out west that rig these line through and they fish them real slow over shallow flats and they catch some great big females in the pre-spawn now i'm going to use something like this more uh the seven inch in the summer so that's why you're not going to see a lot of baits this style tonight. Um, this 9-inch bait weighs like 3 ounces. And they're like, these things hold up really good. You can catch a ton. You can rig a treble on it. Thanks, Eric Riley. I appreciate it. Uh, I believe I was really close to 13,000 subscribers. Like this morning, I was thinking we're only 5 or 6 off, but apparently YouTube deleted some. So somebody asked about rattles. And there's a reason I went out and bought these glass rattles right here. Now you can shove rattles inside your swim bait. Great for dirty water. You can actually ignite and make some with a rattle in there. You know Money Minnow? Uh, when they first come out, I'll be honest, they're dog shit. Uh, they're a lot better now. They almost didn't really have enough tail. It was like a body and then a body with no tail and then a little paddle back there. 9 inch rig, 12 aught beast hook, or you're going to have to have a really long shank um, swim bait hook. These rattles here, these are the Jean LaRue uh, glass rattles. These are the ones I like to use if I put them in a swim bait. Great. I actually stuff these in tubes. I, I put these in all kinds of things. Uh, you smash them, put them in frogs. Oh yeah. Eric, so, Eric, we'll go ahead and talk about the old burrito baits. Very popular bait. I'm trying to get my stuff organized. So, one of the most popular swim baits out there are in this box. This is, these are burrito baits. This is the burrito, uh, I believe it's called the burrito baca and it's a it's got weight on the bottom this is more of a swim bait i'm going to throw on ledges in the summer it's very popular in mexico for this time of year i've got two in here i really like this is the nacho which means it's nachos this is the nacho it's going to imitate small forge I like the color schemes, a little bit dirtier water. This one's going to imitate more of a male brim. This one is just another brim style, yellow perch. These are hard to get, man. Um, these are great baits. Uh, they're made of silicone, uh, and they've got kind of a, a boot wedge tail there. These are great baits. Now, uh, Gail, who makes these, uh, says if you're throwing a lipless crankbait, 
throw this in the same place you throw a lipless crankbait. It's great on a yo-yo retrieve. I'm really excited about tossing these around this spring. I don't know about y'all. My weather's just been terrible. And then, there is the big top hook gill. Uh, I'm going to throw this one right here uh, more in the late spring, kind of in that uh, spawning transition. You can throw this around beds. You can throw this in any area the bluegill are starting to bed, especially out deeper. The, this is a really sick bait. Uh, it has a very unique tail. We're going to have, it's not a thumper. It's going to have more like that Huddleston lifelike swim to it. And then if you're on a lake that there's not a lot of bluegill, you go into this right here. This is the big line through six inch gizzard. This is going to be more of a summertime deal or around the shad spawn. Uh, this one, uh, line through, line goes up the nose. It actually comes out the back, so you almost butch brown rig. But, dude, these are hard to get. There's a reason guys try to flip these for insane amount of money. Uh, I don't agree with it, but it is what it is. And hopefully I can get Gal on here to just talk more about uh, the Bacchus. But he usually drops them every Sunday. He's trying to catch up with orders. Uh, BurritoBaits.com. That's the way to go. Uh, and you better be on there. The nachos are about 15 16 bucks. The gizzard and that uh, gill are about $30 to $40. Uh, one thing about the Burrito Baits, they hold up really, really well. For the most part, I'm going to use um, uh, <clears throat> the big ones in the summer. I like the nachos in the swing. Get out the BAMFS. All right. Got more swim baits in here. You know what? I'm just not going to go in any order anymore. We're just going to pull swim baits out. We're going to just get random as hell. What kind of rod do you need to cast a large swim bait? Um, depending on size, 7.6 uh, to 7.11 heavy action rod. If you're throwing hollow bellies like a bass tricks and, and small like a other stuff that's six inches or less, a seven six medium heavy, as long as it's three quarter ounces or less, is going to get you where you need to be. Yeah. So this is the thirteen fishing B A M F shad. Matter of fact, this one is I haven't thrown it but once in my pool. You notice it's got a really unique tail to it. This is the bigger size. Uh, if you've seen the underwater video from Wired to Fish, this thing looks like a gizzard shad. Still an echo. Lynn, I don't know what's going on uh, with the, the echo here. Let me see if I can fix it. Uh, I like a 10 aught beast hook in this guy right here. Uh, you're going to imitate a big shad. So if you're fishing up shallow, you're on a lake like Kentucky Lake, Gunnersville. Those fish are making that push shallow. Some aggressive females want to eat up this bait right here. Man, it will get munch. And then, hell, we'll talk about this guy. This is a Matler's Hammertail Shad. This is going to be kind of more in that subtle... Uh, fishing it deep, trying to catch a big pre-spawner or want a big meal. Uh, very subtle action underwater. Uh, got a big old hook up top. This thing weighs about two ounces. This is a really good uh, gizzard imitator. And then, this is a Savage Gear 3D Roach. It is a jointed soft swim bait. And it doesn't really fish far underwater. It's uh, the best way to describe it. It's almost like a glide, soft glide bait. Uh, it will go back and forth, and it looks really good. It just does not go very deep. Um, you rig it with a treble hook, goes through the nose, comes out the bo bottom. It's a very realistic. You see the fins come out of that. This is a great bait. You're not a big Savage Gear fan, but best swim bait for fishing a lake with a lot of grass. Uh, well, it's hard to say best, but 
anything that's rigged on a beast. I did not cover the HUD 68 Epic, Eric. Believe it or not, I don't have any HUDs. I wish I did. They kind of got scarce to get. And I'm too poor for a Roman made mother. But uh, this is a great bait uh, for grass. One of my favorites, one of the all time, one of the OGs. This is the trash fish. This is the six inch trash fish. And I've got this on a five aught um, six cents uh, swim bait hook. What's cool about a trash fish is you see the back here. There's a slot where that beast hook can sit in. See that little slot? So when this thing collapses, man, you're getting all fish. You can just kind of tech expose that in there. You swim really good. A really good grass swim bait. Now what I want people to know, it's called the little creeper for a reason. This thing is made to fish really slow. Great pre-spawn bait. Even better, this is the little creeper gill. Um... As these fish get start to feed up on bluegill and stuff, they start to get more aggressive around beds. These little um, little creeper gills are really, really good. Again, that's just like a 5 aught. I think maybe, I don't know the weight. You can fish this around boat docks, around grass lines. Catch a lot of fish right here. I don't I don't have any uh, Cast 8 Catch 22s. I sure don't. Eric might. Oh, he just said Bay Chang, I wonder what your thoughts on the Daiwa Tatua LT spinning reel. I love mine. I've thrown Nico rigs on it, wacky rigs. I've thrown small Kitex. I just ordered another one. I really like the Daiwa Tatua spinning reel. It's light, very easy, nice drag on it. Good, good one. Little creepers do kick ass. So that's how you rig it with a beast hook. This is a color I really like. This is just their sexy shad. And the reason these don't have eyes in them is because Ben O down there, little creeper, he sent me a bunch of secondhand ones where the eyes fell out or maybe some of the plastic wasn't right. And so shout out to Ben O for taking care of me. I've got enough trash fish to last forever. So the Savage Gear bluegill swim baits are not bad, Stephen. You can. Uh, I'm not a huge Savage Gear fan, but some of their stuff is good. That's a good deal. 145 on that spinning reel is really good. Um, now, if you want to go big, here is the 8-inch trash fish. And I've got this on a 10 aught owner flashy on the bottom. So I want to draw attention in this bait. I want to say, hey, you guys getting ready to spawn. I'm a big meal. I'm slow on the bottom. Eat me. And again, you can really see that in the back. Where it allows this hook to slide up. It doesn't really have a shad profile. It's almost a carp profile. But man they eat this sucker. And you can see the differences. This is a 6 inch. And this is the 8 inch. Uh, both basically in a shad hitch tile pattern. Now if I'm fishing really deep. And this is redneck as hell. This is. The trash fish I throw. This color is albino ayu. And out deep, man, they eat that sucker. And this is a 10 aught hammer hook. And this fish, this one has caught some fish. But you have to, I kind of have to put a toothpick in here when I'm fishing to keep that up. But it looks redneck, but that thing on the bottom, it catches. Dude, I do think bass smash that uh, cart pattern in the spawn. Um, from bow fishing at night Eric I'll tell you this uh, I've been out night bow fishing during the spawn and anytime we see a carp and it runs around toward the bed uh, those bass get really aggressive they do not like them uh, I don't know about the Asian carp but just your common carp that has this kind of profile bass don't like them because they eat the eggs man but whatever this does out deep I fish this super super slow um, it doesn't have much thump to it. It's a creeper. Reason called a little creeper. But that nose shovels shit on the bottom. And, man, they eat this thing. Been been something I've thrown for years and didn't really tell nobody about until Tactical Bass and launched the video. But um, I would like to see more carp-looking swim baits. Um, I think bass definitely react to them very different.
Um, God, I got so much stuff. This is, you've seen it on the channel, this is the Working Class Zero. This is the Citizen. Um, this is the 6-inch or 7-inch, and I've got a 10-out owner flashy on the bottom of it. You can see I've got Texpos. Again, imitating some big forge here, looking for some big bikes. I do, Jeremy. Matter of fact, we got to talk about this. This is one of the best of all time, if not the greatest of all time. This is the Babe. Uh, this is from 3F Fishing. Hopefully, they drop some more baits. I think probably a week or two out. And uh, you see, it's got the harness on the bottom. This is a table rock color. Really good bait to catch some big baits or big bass. Citizen vs. Battleshed. So we can do that, Eric. Let me uh, grab the Battleshed here. So this is the new version, Battleshed. You'll notice it's got a more rounded nose on it. Uh, again, you've got a slot down here for your belly hook. The Citizen has actually got more of a solid body. So Battleshed down here. The tails are pretty similar. The, the Battle Shad has that traditional rounded nose, almost has more of a gizzard profile. This one still looks like a shad, but if you'll notice, this one on my left hand has got just a little bit more easier flex in it uh, than the Citizen. Both catch great big fish. I personally like the Citizen a little bit better. I, you get two in a pack. You got a little bit more quality looking finish on the battle shad. So these are like 30 bucks a piece. Alright, best three affordable swim baits for guys starting out. Get a zoom get a pack of zoom swimmers. If you want that hollow body action. Um let's see. Working Class Zero ain't really affordable. Scottsboro Tackle uh, makes a great swim bait. And then, got to get some Kytex, man. That's, I mean, so Kytex, uh, some hollow belly, Zoom Swimmer holds up good, and it's Scottsboro Tackle. Oh, man. So those are some soft, big baits I just went over. But here's one I really like. And you guys that watch the channel know, I really like this guy right here. This is the Scottsboro line through. Yep, true bass, good hollow belly. There's, I feel like there's a better, and Eric, you can correct me, I feel like the market's better for hollow bellies now than it was five or six years ago where you just had bass tricks doing it. And a lot of guys tried and, and they couldn't replicate it, but now true bass has gotten better. Uh, Berkeley hollow bellies, the six cents core. Um, and this is one of my favorites right here, man. That's the Scottsboro. This is a line through. Here's a treble hook. And I've used it. This is just a good little bluegill imitator. Uh, my guys up north, you love these. My guys live in lakes with a lot of great swim baits. or are a lot of great bluegills like that. So line goes through the nose to the treble hook. Uh, let's see. I still got one rigged up here. I thought I had one. And then you've got this guy right here. So this is the six inch version. And I've got it rigged. You see the treble hook on the bottom. A lot of guys ask, well, when do you throw a treble on the bottom versus a jig head or beast hook? Personally, if I'm fishing a lot of flats, open water, I like that treble. So when the bass bites it, he grabs the hook, it slides out, your bait slides out of the way. It's a really, really good one. Love that uh, Scottsboro. This smaller one, a lot of guys are going to gravitate uh, to this because it's not quite as big. They relate to this more. Um, I just like the whole line through deal. Uh, you have really good hookup ratio. Man, I have an Osprey here. Uh, and I'm gonna show you what's happening to my Ospreys. 
if you don't use these swim baits and you just hoard them. So this is an Osprey. This is the six inch tournament talon. Um, see this white stuff? Yeah, anytime you pour lead into a bait, for some reason, it, if they sit too long, you get this chemical reaction. This is accounted for a ton of big bass. Now this is the top hook. You can put a treble on the bottom if you want to. I'm gonna use this more post-spawn. I like the line through version, uh, pre-spawn. Uh, I like, I think you can fish that Osprey Talon, the non-top hook one, a little more efficient during the spring, fishing up in the water column versus down. This bait was made to fish it down. But if you don't use your Ospreys, you're gonna get some white nasty on there. And I wish I knew how to fix that because I've lost several of them due to that. I'm trying to keep all this shiznit. Epic Eric got me jacked up being on here. I hear my um, wife's car. Osprey Dink. Going to be honest, Big Red Bass, not a fan of the Dink. Uh, let's talk about some more swim baits here. What else have I got laid out? Now, this is a swim bait. This is the Six Sense Hybrid Swimming Crank. If you'll notice, we're going to talk about hard baits now. The hybrid swimming crank is jointed. It's got that lip. It's more of kind of a, your wake style bait. I have thrown a freestyle. I've got one sitting right here. Boom. These are really good on the beast hooks. I don't ever order anything from swim bait underground. Not this isn't more of a this is more of kind of a wake swimming crankbait. Where these are really good is actually around bedding fish. They don't like that, you know, any type of wake bait. Uh, that's old jank juice right there. But uh, a really good lipped hard bait. I need to get some more glides, Eric. I'm waiting for old tax man to come in and I'm really going to. So this is probably, if you're a beginner in swim baits and you wanna buy a hard swim bait, G2 shell cracker right there. Uh, I've seen some, yes? Do you need anything? Some dip. Okay. The wife has gone to Walmart for emergency supplies. I just need some dip. So that's the G2 Shellcracker by Black Dog. Awesome little bait. You can wake this. You can crank it. It's great in a pre-spawn, great in a post-spawn. It will come through cover really, really well. Um, you can find these on eBay. And sometimes Black Dog has them on his website. Just a great little bait fun is a good word and you don't have to have a big giant setup for that g2 it weighs less than an ounce use your whatever rod you throw a 6xd on it's good for this guy right here Daiwa dx is a good rod it's a little heavy um I would look at the Dobbins Fury 795 if you want a good swim bait rod and don't want to bust the budget Fury 795 so, the new Glide, since you guys are talking about it, this is the Irashi Glide. Um, I've thrown it in my pool, thrown it in the pond. I personally like it for the money. Um, it's got a good S action. It's got some roll to it. Very easy to work. Uh, weighs about three ounces, though, so you're going to have to kind of upgrade your equipment. Really like this. It's got that JDM look to it. Matter of fact, I don't have a big giant gang craft, but this is the Jointed Claw 148. This is a great beginner swim bait because it's not super huge. It's a JDM gang craft, really good bait. Probably your best glides for the money. 
Uh, you can bump it up to the bigger size Gain Craft. You can see how much bigger that Arashi Glide is. This is going to be about 39 bucks. Same price you're getting uh, with Arashi. Yeah, so color on glides, I'll be honest, I either like a shad profile or a trout profile. Um, I don't think get bass really care. Uh, you can catch bass on trout colored baits in lakes that don't have trout. Uh, other than a jerk bait, a glide bait uh, like this or this right here, the bass are fitting on the profile. You're drawing bass to you. A glide bait and a jerk bait are really the only baits where a bass looks and decides to go get it. For the most part, your crank baits, uh, soft plastics, even your your other swim baits, for the most part, it's a reaction bite. Whereas a glide bait, uh, you're drawing them to you just like a jerk bait. Uh, line size 20 pound or 17 pound fluorocarbon. Um, if you're really scared, 25 pound four. I don't use braid on any of this stuff. And I'll tell you why. Braid has a tendency to overrun and not in the spool. You go to fire your $50 bait out and it stops and it snaps. Fluoro does have some stretch in it. You know, a lot of people, due to popular belief, says fluor fluoro doesn't have stretch. It has a little bit. You won't break like that on the cast. If you really don't want to break off, go with mono. A lot of guys use 20, 25 pound mono. Um, yeah, um, I don't think uh, any of these are really that realistic. Most of your bait fish don't have a long, skinny profile uh, when you're looking at it, but when you look when you see a glide bait from over the top, then you start seeing why bass like it. Who makes the hardest thumping six, six inch soft bait for stained water? Man, uh, I don't know any that just thump really, really hard. Um, Zoom Swimmer thumps pretty dang good. So, I run 15 pound tactical fort, but I only throw Guggen Kitek swim baits. Well, I don't throw any Guggen stuff, so I will just say that would probably be fine for the Kitex. Copolymer is great. So, this is the Depths 175. This is the OG. This is the this is kind of the swim bait that really took off. And you'll notice that white stuff right in here. It's foam. This is foam filled. Uh, this is what Butch Brown made famous. He throws the 250. The 250 is even bigger, but for my style of fishing where I fish, that 175 is really good. And this is a flash carp. That's a carp color, man. I'm telling you, there's something about carp colored swim baits bass eat. Uh, looks like a common carp. Looks like a shad. It works, man. But if you can find some 175 or 250s at a good price, it is the best. All right. I don't know where I'm at here. I'm all over the place again. Yeah, I think, uh, I'll be honest, I think tail thump is a very overrated part of a swim bait. I think... The head action is the most important part because uh, you don't want it, it to look unnatural. That's right. Now, my other, other favorite glide bait, and I don't have a ton of them, is this guy right here. This is the Shizzard. And this is the nastiest glide for the money you'll find. This thing cuts left and right hard. You can burn it. You can slow twitch it. Uh, what I like to do is give the reel about three or four cranks and kill it, and this thing will go whoosh, way, way out, and then it come back, and you hammer the handle quick, and it turns backwards and looks at the fish. These shizzard is the deal. I've only got one. Mikey Ball's got my other. I can't trade this thing, but bigfishboys.com, they're going to be making some more. I love this shizzard. A very simplistic looking bait. It is not like going to blow you away with realism it's kind of like a bull shad it's uh it's dirty looking but it catches them 
Yeah, I, I'm, if I'm going to throw an S waiver, I'm going to go with the 168. Uh, this Gancraft's a little bit bigger than the 128 uh, S waiver. Um, again, I got to load up. I got kids. I can't be buying glide baits all the time. My wife will kill me. She already looked at me really dirty when she came out here. So she's going to Walmart. She sold all that. Dude, I need a Hinkle. Uh, Hinkle Shad. What else have I got? I don't know if I got anything else I hadn't talked about. I've kind of gone through the gambit here. I've got a freaking mess. Donut Shad is really, really good. What size hook for the Mega Bass Freestyle? I'll use a 6 aught on her beast. Three sixteen workhorse. That's an awesome glide. Uh, man, three sixteen so expensive though. Um, I wish I had a bull shad. I, I don't. I've got a baby bull shad up here. That is a great beginner swim bait. If you want to go fish ponds or place where there's not a lot of big profile forage, that freaking baby bull shad is the deal. So someone was talking about the rising sun. So there's a seven inch rising sun right there. That's uh that's from 316. Matter of fact, a subscriber sent me this. Probably one of the best swim baits to throw weightless. Um, a really, really good tail kick on this. Great head movement. Uh, the guys at Fork and some other places, they throw this guy on a big eight aught uh, or 10 aught beast hook without any weight and just fish it right up near the surface. That is, an awesome, awesome bait. Caught a nine inch largemouth on the baby bull shad today, or nine pound. Damn. That's all I gotta say. Damn. What are the price ranges of the baits you have shown? Anywhere from $5 a bait or a pack of two or three, all the way up to. The most expensive one I got is probably this Shizzard. This is about seventy to eighty dollars right here. And to be honest, that's cheap. That is cheap. Oh, nine inch, not pound. All right. Do I have a preference of when to throw soft or hard baits in the spring? Yeah. Uh, whichever one they're biting. Um, I know that sounds cliche to sound say, but. Uh, a lot of times I'll start with a hard bait, and if I'm not getting bit in an hour or two, I'm going to switch out to a soft bait. But I like to catch fish, and a lot of times in the spring I've got a soft one, a hard one, and I've got crank baits, chatter baits, all that stuff on there. The Hog Farmer stand up head is freaking awesome. If you guys haven't ever seen one, and that's the Hog Farmer stand up head. And what that makes it do is when that bait's falling it falls head first and stands there on the bottom uh, a lot of guys really like that head um, in the summer or in the spring because you can kind of hop that keep that swim bait in place of course he makes a big freaking tuna hook like this one right here really like scott at hog farmer stuff But that's all I got for the moment. Um, it's really not the greatest video. Look at my hair. It's freaking falling out. It's bad, brother. Um, one I haven't gone over with. This is the 8-inch mag draft. And I have a love-hate relationship uh, with this bait right here. I get a ton of bites on it. I don't hook up on them. And that's probably because the fish that are trying to bite this probably can't eat it. Uh, I had a bunch of freaking teeth marks on the back of this but this is a really really good bait uh, just because i can't catch them you know chris zaldane other guys they love the mag draft that eight inch i know alex rudd likes it but you get that treble hook that harness system and then you can just kind of hook it like that right there and swim it. this bait has a lot of thump the mag draft does really really good one I didn't cover the dark sleeper, and here's why. That's more of a, you can throw it on a bed. It's a really good bed fishing swim bait. I figure I'll lean toward that more in the summer. Very small profile. Yes, he does. That's correct, James. I would agree with Eric. If I'm fishing a glide bait 
I, I want the water to have just enough color to where they can't see it perfectly. A little bit of wind doesn't really need to be blowing. I, a lot of times I'm watching a glide. I fish it higher in the water. Um, but there are guys that fish that glide bait where you can't see it. But that's why swimming pool's good because you kind of learn what the bait should be doing. Thoughts on the new Striking Tourgate line? It's good. It's Sunline. So if you like Sunline, use the Striking line. Um, add a top treble to the mag draft. I thought about doing that. And then you've got the Freestyle, which is a cool bait. I actually gave Jake Lawrence a pack of these things. So... That uses the owner beast hook. You can see it doesn't have the, the harness rig. I've actually got more bites on the 8 inch than I have this guy right here. It looks really good in the water. Um, I just haven't had any luck on it. I actually fished this last year and I ended up catching them on a Scottsboro. Um, it does tend to go like this. I will say that. Alright. Put that back. Before I lose it, I gotta start putting my baits up, or I'm gonna have a problem going on here. I have rearranged the bait room a little bit to accommodate the madness that is swim baits. What is some of the most expensive glide baits, and also what is some of the most rarest ones? Most expensive is probably a Roman made mother, uh, Hinkle Shad, Hinkle Trout. Those are really expensive. A high powered herring. The 8-inch one, you're looking to spend around $350, $400 uh, for that guy as well. Wish I had some. Times are tough, guys. I don't have any. There's a good question. Most overrated swim bait. The Boy Duckett BD Shed. Piece of shit. What's up, Tim? Go Vols. Like to see my fellow Vols on here. Uh, I'm just... Uh, you know, the BD shed, I catch some fish. I won't deny that, but just how that whole thing went down, I wouldn't want a part of it. Ugh. I, I'll tell you right now, since we're talking about it, I, I think Roman Maids are great baits. They're great for being custom and all that stuff. I think they're pretty overrated. I think you can catch as many fish on a Grand Craft 178 of the Big Game Craft uh, as the Shizzard and stuff like that as you can a mother. Um, I, I understand the craftsmanship, but there's a lot of guys, garage maker guys, making them. I don't have anything against Boyd personally. I just don't like that business decision. Um, I have not tried the Bash Munition Patriot Minnow. And I'll be honest, any bait like that that's really mass produced that they got open molds available for, you know, Big Bite makes the same bait and uh, tons of guys. I'm just not a fan of those mass produced uh, homemade swim baits. Now, you can say the Scottsboro uh, has the same as uh, uh, some other companies, but I've been throwing them for a long time. I'm just, I think that's kind of a, it's not a true swim bait to me, I guess. It's more of a, like a half trailer deal. But. Yeah, I'm not spending 750 no problem, man. I'm fixing to jump off here myself. You can see I'm trying to clean up the bait room uh, while I'm talking. I'm trying to get stuff back in here. Um, I'm going to say this, too. If you guys love swim baits, it's very easy to get caught up in the hype train. And what I mean by that, you will get on underground forums and stuff. And they will hype up certain baits. And I shouldn't say this because I haven't thrown one. But I think Piz is really a hype swim bait. Like people really 
hype them up, and I feel like it's gotten them more into trading around for piss swim baits and not fishing them. They definitely catch fish, but I feel like there's a lot of really good swim baits out there uh, that are worth as much as a piss, but they put high price tags on them. And, um, these bait makers know. Uh, Toxic makes great swim baits. I don't have any, but I've heard really good things about them. So, that black dog was the G2. So I'm, I've been on here for like 35, 40 minutes. Um, we got knocked out with the internet and all that stuff. Tried to get Epic Eric on here. It's been a hell of a night. Um, so there's a possibility I'm on quarantine all week. And if so, I will quarantine myself to the video camera. And we're going to try to do some regular tips. So some of these questions you guys have been asking me, I've been making notes. Hey, what can I do a video about this and that? Um, no problem, Don G. We'll get Epic Eric on here. We'll talk a little bit of finesse shallow water fishing. He can pull out those tricks for us. We'll try to get our microphones working right uh, this time. So, but I'm going to put all these baits up. Uh, guys, sixcentsfishing.com. Use the code BAITMAN for 10% off. Uh, Andrew, I will use the 4 uh for the 4.4 Divine. Uh, Bateman Raw, we're going to try to get another Raw uh, done. Uh, Alton Jones Jr. is going to come on Bateman Raw uh, next week. Uh, I'm really excited to have little Alton on here. A lot of people wrote that dude off. And little Alton uh, has been tearing them up. And if you watch MLF, the dude had a Depths 250 up on his deck. So, anyway. Sometimes doing these live streams, I get so going off, and I, I'm going to have to do some of the stuff we talked about on a regular video, but I got to film a video about Ned Riggs, Carolina Rig video. No one talks about the Carolina Rig no more. It catches giant bass this time of year. Probably the most underrated bait you can have on your deck. Nobody likes to fish it, but man, it will catch them. So, we are going to do the Carolina Rig. Eric, you can DM me in in me on ig about that rig you throw some baits at me i got ideas for what i'm gonna put so anyway i'm gonna quarantine myself to the bait room and i got a little special place i can go film some videos so anyway guys thank you so much for joining the stream i'm gonna go hang out with uh little bait man and bait girl um make sure you smash the like button for me i gotta go make a daggum thumbnail uh thanks again for joining